Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go through um, a QR factorization example, also known as a QR decomposition, um, using a 2x2 two two matrix. And you'd mimic these steps for a 3x3, three three, so, you know, I figured for a 3x3, three three, this, this video would have to be insanely long, and I don't want it to be insanely long, so I'm talking like Mitch Hedgeberg, and um, also, okay, I'll stop. All right, um, anyway, here's a, a two by two matrix. And um, let's suppose that we are interested in the RQ, or sorry, QR factorization, not RQ. Um, so uh, this two by two, shoot, sorry guys. This two by two, let's say, is this. What happened to the music? Okay, maybe I can't do this video anymore. Okay, I can't keep this video, I have to re-record it. Maybe I don't. Um, okay, three, one, two, zero. So let's say that this matrix is matrix A. And again, we want to write this matrix A as this matrix A equals QR. Um, the properties are Q is um, an orthogonal matrix, and um, R is an upper triangular matrix. Okay. So as soon as you hear the Q is an orthogonal matrix, you should probably be thinking, hmm, Gram-Schmidt process. So first, um, before we can apply the Gram-Schmidt process, we need to check that our uh, uh, matrix uh, has a determinant different from zero, which is that our matrix is invertible. And you could easily check that this matrix is invertible. Okay, so um, since this matrix is invertible, we can take the columns and look at the columns as two vectors. Suppose one of them is x1, uh, and so x1 is the vector 3, comma 1, and the second one is um, x2, and x2 is 3, comma 0. First, in order for us to get to the um, QR decomposition or factorization of A, what we need to do is create our matrix Q, which is going to be um, a set of orthogonal column vectors. And those two orthogonal column vectors are going to come from orthonormalizing these two vectors using the Gram-Schmidt process. Okay. All right, cool. So let's get on with that soon. So first of all, recall by the Gram-Schmidt process that we can call V1 well, actually, I'm not going to perform the Gram-Schmidt process because this video, again, would be too long if I did that. So, like, since I've gone through this process once, I'll tell you that as we do with the Gram-Schmidt process, we'd call V1, I suppose, X1 in this case. So, V1 um, and the Gram-Schmidt process, which is the first vector, is going to just be 3, 1 itself. And then V2, which we construct... Uh, by, you know, applying the Gram-Schmidt process, which is by doing x2 minus, um, and then x2, uh, x1, which is v1, over the norm of v1, which is x1 squared, right, times x1, which is v1. So this is how you'd get to it. But if you did this process, and you could do it on yourself, uh, for yourself, sorry, not on yourself, well, I don't know how to speak English. Um, okay, or this is why I teach math, right? So one fifth, comma. Yes, Annie is okay. Stop asking her so many times. Okay. Um, a smooth criminal. Okay. Anyway, if you do this, you get there. He's timeless, isn't he? Hopefully, these videos are too. I can only as aspire. I can never replicate the king. He's like Michael Tyson. He's like a, a really unique character in human history. Anyway, um, so there you go. V2, and then we have um, V1, which is, again, just uh, X1, which is 3, 1. Now, if we make a column out of uh, these two vectors and call that matrix um, that is formed Q, notice that Q fulfills our criteria uh, for uh, the QR factorization 
which is but I will warn you that we're not done with Q just yet like first Q is an orthogonal um no what did I just do sorry guys it's negative 3 and 5 okay so note note that this doesn't qualify for Q because an orthogonal vector is what we require of Q and this Q isn't orthogonal because an orthogonal vector is one where Q transpose times Q is equal to I and so here if we check Q transpose is um, 3 negative 3 1 5 and if we multiply this by 3 1 negative 3 5 then we get like we get like for starters this first entry would be 3 times so let me first make sure that I did this right 3 negative 3 and then 1 5 that's right times Q which is 3 negative 3 1 5 okay cool so if we do if we do this then we're gonna get 3 times 3 which is 3 that's not from a video that's like outside actually plus 1 that's 4 and that's clearly not the first entry of I so here's what we're missing we need to orthonormalize these not just um, orthogonalize them but normalize these two vectors that we came up with and then we'll get the correct ones for Q okay so uh, remember at the Graham Schmidt process you would have needed to um, normalize them anyway so we do V1 over the norm of V1 and so doing that here you should easily find that this is going to be 3 over root 10 comma uh, 1 over root 10 and then um, for the second one v2 over the norm of v2 we could write okay just need to normalize that so notice that the norm of v2 is going to be the square root of 1 over 25 plus I'll just show you this because it's trickier algebra than the other one. Okay, so this is the square root of, or arithmetic, not algebra, 10 over 25, which is clear that it simplifies to root uh, 2 over 5, which is root 2 over root 5. But you're dividing by it. So V2, which is this thing, is going to be... Um, or this is norm of 1 over the norm of v2 times v2 oh I don't need v2 is already a vector I don't need to put it right so if you do this then we want 1 over this quantity so we want to multiply v2 by root 5 over root 2 see this is the start of the trickier arithmetic arithmetic however you say it okay I already we've been through this I don't know how to speak English <coughs> Okay, cool. Now, if I push this inside, right, because we can do that, then I could write this as 1 over root 2. And then root 5 over 5. And then it's um, root 5, negative 3 times root 5 over 5. And here, you could observe that root 5 over 5 is a rationalization of 1 over root 5. So, um, well, it's when it had its senses. So if we made sure that it lost its senses, then we could write it as, well, first we have the 1 over root 2, but we could write root 5 over 5 is 1 over root 5 because it equals that. Um, and then similarly doing um, kind of the same operation, we get similarly doing the same operation. I am thoroughly proving that I do not know how to speak English. 1 over root 10, comma, negative 3 over root 10. Yes, Annie. Okay, so she's finally, okay, it's over. Okay, so, um, there. So that, um, but this math is not okay. Yes, it is, actually, I've checked. It's, we're good, we're good, guys. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> the Graham, Graham and Schmidt are okay. Okay, um, so, and so R, Q, R, and A. Well, we don't know about R yet. Okay, so Q now, correctly, could be claimed as 
um, V1 over the norm of V1, so the orthonormalized version of V1, which is 3 over root 10, uh, and then 1 over root 10. And, um, and then V2 over the norm of V2, which we just worked out all the details of right there. So, oh no, 1 over root 10. We're on the scary part of this QR factorization. Okay. So there's Q. <laughs> um, if I didn't know math, I think I'd be like really, really silly. Maybe too silly. Um, okay. So, that's Q there. Got it. And then we said that Q had to be orthogonal. And we said that that means QTQ has to be I. Got it. Um, so if you do QT, note it, notice that QT is the same thing as Q. So like if we did that, we would have to multiply like um, that. So we'd have to do like Q, the first entry of that product would have to be 3 over root 10 um, times itself, right? Times 3 over root 10 plus 1 over root 10 times 1 over root 10 because we would have done this times that, right? Remember, I just said Q, T, and Q have the same entries. And so this would have to be 3 over 10. And now, yeah, I don't know how to do arithmetic. 9 over 10 plus 1 over 10. That's 10 over 10. Well, that's 1. So that's the correct first entry of I. So let's just, you know, take it, take it for truth that it will work out. Trust me. Okay, cool. All right, so... It's a lot of progress. We just figured out what Q has to be and the QR decomposition. So we just need to get to R. Now there, we've got a lot of help because of the properties of Q, right? So we know that we want to get to A is equal to Q, where Q is an orthogonal matrix, which I just started checking with you and said, believe me it is, you could check the rest by performing all the computation involved in showing this, right? But yeah, Q is orthogonal. We just did that by the Gram-Schmidt process on the columns, right? On the column vectors, okay? By orthonormalizing the column ve the, co the vectors formed by the column of the original matrix A. Okay, fine. We got Q. And now we need to get to R. But we just said we want A equals Q times R. So here, if we multiply... Actually, let me write it with a little bit of space and in black. So we have... A equals Q times R. That's where we want to get to. Notice that if I multiply this quantity on the left by Q transpose on the left side of the equal sign, I'd have to do the same over here. But because Q is orthogonal, Q transpose times Q is I. So I get that Q transpose times A is equal to this, which is I, times R. But wait, I times any other matrix is just that other matrix, so I times R is just R. So you see the way we're going to get to R is by multiplying Q transpose, which happens to be Q, with um, A, and that's going to give us R. And what we said about R is that it is an upper triangular matrix. Okay, so that's all we're checking for. Um, Alright, cool. So since this is a two by two set, um, an upper triangular matrix would just mean zero, number, number, number. Okay, cool. So um, let's see if that in fact happens. I really don't want to go through the whole computation, but I'll do it. So R and the factorization is supposed to be again QT times A, right? That's what we just concluded. Yep, QT here and QT here. So yeah, R is Q, t we, well, I wrote Q inverse, it's um, QT. But for an orthogonal matrix, do you see that QT is the same as Q inverse? Because it has this property, obviously, right? N that means that QT is the inverse of Q and vice versa. Okay, anyway, let's get on with this. R is equal to, QT is Q itself, so... Ah! Okay. R 
is equal to QT, which is the same as Q, times A, which is this guy. And this is the only part I'm going to do with you. We just said that this is supposed to be an upper triangular matrix, so the entry right here is supposed to be zero. There are four entries, right? So this is supposed to be zero. So let's do that entry, and then you could do the rest on your own. And that entry would have to be found by doing which computation? This made vertical times that, right? So in other words, one over root 10 times three plus negative three over root 10 times one. And that is clearly three over root 10 minus three over root 10, which is zero. So you should believe me, come on, I checked the most important part. All right, cool. All right, um, you know, mimic these very steps for um, decomposition for a three by three matrix. And um, yeah, all right, otherwise, you know, you're good. Take care. Uh, this is an application. This has a lot of applications, obviously. And you see that like this is also um, like an application of the Gram-Schmidt process, if you will, in some parts anyway. Okay, cool. Take care.